Hey guys, Greg Benz here. In this tutorial, you'll learn all about the amazing new texture slider available in Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw, which we'll use to process for a better water foreground in this scene. But before we get to a real image edit, let's look at a couple test images to understand the differences between clarity and texture. In this first test image, we've got both landscape and cityscape elements, which makes it a great way of comparing these different tools. So let's right click on a raw image, create a new smart object via copy. We'll simply call this one clarity and double click to go in and adjust the clarity. Sliding to the left, of course, will remove detail. In this case, notice there's some artifacting look to the trees and the buildings, not very helpful, but in some cases, negative clarity can enhance an image by removing details. More likely, you're gonna push it to the right to bring out more detail, and somewhere around this 30% mark looks pretty good for this image, but if we push it all the way to 100, we'll be able to better see the differences between clarity and texture. So let's over adjust this on purpose, just for the sake of comparison. We'll now right click the raw, create another new smart object to be a copy, rename this to texture, double click it. And if we bring texture to the left, we also remove detail, but notice we do so in a way that's a little bit more pleasing. It doesn't create as much artifact, which makes it great if you wanted to smooth out noise in the road, perhaps there was some uh, glass or metal detail you wanted to smooth out. And certainly if you're doing portraiture, it's a great way to do skin softening and just clean up the skin on a close up portrait of people. But again here, we're gonna to push to the right to add texture to this scene. And just a little bit would be the right answer. We're gonna push all the way to 100% just to make it easier to compare these tools. Click OK, hit Command-1 to zoom into 100%, and let's hide these layers so we're now looking at just our original RAW. When we turn on 100% texture, it's doing just what we'd expect. The grass has more texture, the tree leaves have more texture. It's not really adjusting the road or buildings or other parts of the image in a problematic way just from before and after really brings out a lot of detail. Of course, it's too much. If we were back down around that 30 to 50% mark, you'd have a more pleasing adjustment and that would be the right answer, but we're just gonna push it all the way so we can really see what's going on. Now, as I compare these, notice the saturation here and here in these reds is getting overdone. So one of the drawbacks with texture is you might have to knock down the saturation a few points just to counteract what it's doing there. But in general, it's not too much of an issue. Let's turn this off and take a look at Clarity, which is doing something completely different. It's bringing out the bigger edges of these trees. So rather than bring out the little individual leaves, it's looking at bigger details and creating a lot of structure, which creates nice separation between the trees. You can really see one tree to the next in this image. So I like the effect of Clarity, but it's not without some issues. Notice how bright the road is getting. It's a little bit distracting there. And notice also the shadows in the trees are getting punishingly dark because clarity really pushes them down, which you can offset by adding plus 30 to 50% shadows. Oftentimes a lot of shadow adjustment in raw can counteract that clarity problem there. So that's kind of the first look at how these things look on nature. Let's zoom over and look at the city skyline itself. Clicking on texture again, does a really nice job. It's adding crisp, clean lines to these buildings looks much more sharp to the eye with no obvious halos. It is pushing up the saturation. Notice the blues of the building and the oranges in the reflection here are getting a little punchy. So again, you may want to dial back the saturation with texture, but things look really good and it doesn't have a lot of negative issues. By way of comparison, turning on clarity also adds a lot of detail, but in this case, a lot of problems. Look at the highlight colors here. They're getting washed out as losing color. Certain things like the edge here, this new siding, which is not really an important detail to us, is getting much brighter than it should. There is the beginning of some halos. The clouds are looking a little dark. Sometimes you'd see a lot more halo than this. That's not too bad. But the thing that really bothers me in this scene is look at the building here from top to bottom and top to bottom here, from before where there's even toning in the building to after with clarity, where it's darkening the top edges to create more contrast against the brighter sky or here, where it just starts to look really dirty on the building. So in this case, I think clarity is really kind of letting us down by changing these big buildings in a way that doesn't look so nice, whereas texture is gonna bring out a lot more of that texture in just a, a clean and simple way without the halos, without those building issues. So I don't think either one of these is necessarily better. They're just doing different things for the image. And to help better understand that, I created this test image so I've got this pattern here viewed at 100%. We've got noise up top, gradient going from dark to light, left to right, and then down below different test stripes 
These have the same high and low values as the gradient, but they're starting with one pixel stripes on the left, then three pixels, 10 pixels, and 50 pixels over here on the right. So we can turn on clarity to see what it's doing and notice that it adjusts midtone contrast quite a bit and is really punching up these smaller details from before to after as well as causing an uneven result in the grain. See how the grain is getting darker on the right than it is on the left because it's being compared to this detail below in the gradient. So the clarity filter is really reaching quite a ways across the image to make its decisions. By comparison, texture is still creating a little bit of a halo here. It's still problematic, but not nearly as bad. And notice that it's not really doing much of any adjustment along these stripes. To make it easier to visualize this, I've created a difference comparison. So I've got the clarity adjustment in difference mode. I'm enhancing with levels and adding some color so we can see this is what clarity is doing to this image from before and after. These are the areas that are being adjusted. So the noise is being adjusted quite a bit. There's a lot going along along this edge. The gradient is really being adjusted quite a bit in the shadow areas, but not as much in the brighter values. And then down below, we're adjusting at all levels of these bands whether it be the fine detail or even out at 50 pixels, it's still adjusting these edges. And that's why clarity tends to show halos. By comparison, if we look at texture, you can see it's much more precise. It's not adjusting any of the noise and grain here, at least not in a very strong way. It's really focusing on the small details and it's doing much less to exacerbate halos with the bigger details. So it really focuses on the small details in comparison to clarity. So they're just targeting different areas I think this makes texture fairly predictable. You can see that it may have some halo issues along stark edges, but for the most part, it's gonna work on small details, whereas clarity is a lot less predictable. Notice how much it's just changing different areas you might not expect in the image. And if we open up this smart object, let's just simply hide our noise layer on top. I hit Command S to save this back, close it. And now we're looking at the adjustment in clarity from I'm gonna undo with Command Z before and after. So when we have the grain here, notice that clarity is going down. It's making this comparison to the overall value of the grain here and adjusting these shadows quite a bit. Whereas when the grain is gone, it has different references and is making totally different decisions. So clarity can be a little unpredictable and you just need to experiment with it. But it's important to note that you do have the high risk of these halo edges, but the benefit of going after some bigger details that texture just simply is not gonna get into those bigger details. So they both have their place. Now coming back to this original image, let's go ahead and make the adjustments that will really make this image sing. We need to add a raw adjustment here. So we'll go to filter, camera raw filter. And what I wanna do is first, let's take a look at texture, which notice how it's bringing out these fine stringy details of the water coming over the edges of this rock, which I think just really helps enhance the sense of motion and some of the detail there. So I like what that's doing. Let's zero that out and take a look at clarity, which is now getting after much bigger details, the other parts of the wave here. So they're playing together quite nicely. Texture brings out the small details. Clarity brings out some of those bigger details. And I like how the two come together. So let's dial this in more around maybe the 30% mark on texture and clarity. And because clarity has darkened our shadows, let's bring up our shadows a bit here as well. And I'm gonna push texture even further to make sure we really see the results there. But I think somewhere around there, about the right amount, we'll click OK, and just hitting Command Z to go before and after. See how much detail that brings to the water with clarity and the fine parts of water through texture. And we'll zoom in to 100% again. Just coming down here and just looking from before and after how much that's done for our water. There is a little bit of noise that I'm seeing here and I don't know if that's the clarity of the texture, they both may affect that. So let's open up the raw filter and we go to the details tab and just add a little bit of luminous noise reduction, maybe like 10 to 20 points should be about right. And see how that smooths out the water there in a nice way. So if you have some issues like shadows or noise, you can make some other adjustments in camera raw to fix that. But we've overall got a really nice looking adjustment here from before to after. I just don't need it up above. So we'll use our smart filter mask hitting G for our gradient. Let's just draw a gradient that's going to filter us in down below. Maybe try a little bit different here. So now we have a nice adjustment of that water to really make the image sing. I might further dial back some of the edges here where I don't need as much adjustment. So I just switched to a black brush 
and sort of paint down that effect a little bit in places that may not need as much of that correction. Be sure to check out the written version of this tutorial on my blog and be sure to click subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of the next tutorial.